Hi, I'm Cheryl. I'm with Phillips Fiber Art. And today I would like to show you a double wedding ring quilt. Can you imagine making this quilt without all those tiny pieces, without set in curves, without binding? Can you imagine quilting it block by block? If so, Rings and Bind is the book for you. My good friend Linda Paisto and I wrote this together and we had so much fun. What I'd like to do today is an in-depth tutorial going through every step of this process. Our project for today is this four block table topper. Notice that the table topper has scallops all the way around and the arcs are pieced. To get the most out of this tutorial, I think you should take the book and follow along right with me. I'll be giving you the pages as we go. Okay, the first thing you're going to need to make this project is an Arkies tool. Here's what it looks like. Now I have white paper on the back so you can see it. This one tool cuts the backing circle. It cuts the scallop football. It cuts the batting for the scallop football. It cuts the arcs for all the rings, whether they're solid or pieced. Don't worry about buying an extra tool. It comes right together. So when you buy the book, you also get the tool. So let's get started. Now to prepare your tool, you want to add adhesive rings, like something like True Grips or little sandpaper dots, or spray it with Grippy. You want something to keep it from sliding. Even tubes of transparent tape rolled with a sticky side out and stuck to the back of the tool will work. Let's start with the backing fabric. The backing is made from circles that are folded over and also show from the front. So that's why we want to select this fabric with care. Circles and scallops are both inefficient cuts. It takes a lot of fabric. But one of the things that is out there now are wide backing fabrics. While a yard of standard width fabric gives you four circles and two scallops, a yard of wide back gives you 10 circles and six scallops. That difference makes wide backs an excellent choice. You can find a chart on our website for wide backing yardage. Let's get started with a large square of backing fabric. Be sure to press this thoroughly. Uh, you may want to use a, some spray sizing or a mist of water to help that square shrink now rather than later. Most of the time, fabric will shrink more in one direction than the other, so you don't want your circle to become an oval. Once you're satisfied, fold the square in half and crease it with the iron, the and then fold it in half and press it again. Now we're ready to cut our folded square into a circle. To do that, we're going to first take a square ruler, measure here to eight and three fourths, and here to eight and three fourths. I'm aligning my fabric folds to the inner line of the glow tape. Where it intersects, right here with the black dot, is where I put my corner. You can mark this with a pen, but I have found that just taking my rotary cutter and cutting in, oh, about a quarter of an inch, like this, and you do it over here as well, that that is a more accurate marking. Now we put our Arkies tool so that it lines up with that little notch here and the notch here. So your rotary blade is going right back in the same spot. You'll notice your tool extends about the width of the seam allowance. But if you've got those two little notches marked, you've got it. Okay, so now my rotary cutter will go back right into the same cut. Cut it. And when you open it, you've got the perfect circle. And you might want to double check that the first few cuts. So here's your circle. And we have it divided into fourths because of the way we cut it. But now we're going to divide it again into eighths. So to do that, you're going to open it, bring these folds together, and press here. And do that to the other diagonal as well. This will give you eight exact divisions. You're going to mark a quarter of an inch from the edge 
on the diagonal folds, the ones that are biased. You want to draw a permanent line joining point to point, and that should be exactly 12 inches. So you can see here, I take my ruler, and I'm going from the quarter of an inch in here, quarter of an inch here, and putting 12 inches on it, and then I draw a line. And you're going to mark these lines with a pencil, not a, not a Frixion pen or a chalk marker, because those are easily removed or distorted. It's so important because eventually that's the line you're going to sew on to join your blocks together. Interlocking rings are such a defining part of the double wedding ring. The strip sets are going to make the rings. Here are the strips that will make into a strip set. We have narrow and wide and those in between. And here's your blue strip set. And now we have our pink set narrow, wide, and those in between. And the ones in between are the same as the blue, except this time we'll reverse their order. And here's the pink strip set. Those were calculated to make it all work. Notice that both strip sets have yellow and green right in the center, but you'll notice that they're in different order. When those two pieces come together, that's what creates your cornerstone in the finished project. Can you see the yellow and the green? They're not dominant, even though they're the wider pieces. What they do is they're going to show on the back. So now that we've got our strip set, we're ready to cut the arts. Notice how I have them placed out here. I'm going to cut them both in the same direction so that I get opposing yellow and green pieces. When you cut the arcs, be sure you have something on the tool that keeps it from slipping, like we've talked before. Center this line here to the two strips labeled S1 and S2. The two lines parallel to that should be aligned to the strips next to them. These checks here are what makes everything work out so well. You're going to cut four arcs per block. So I have four blues and four pinks. You're going to sew four arcs, all the same color, to make pink rings and blue rings. Now here we have a blue ring. I suggest you use a spray sizing and dampen that edge. Then you can easily fold it over with your fingers like this, a quarter of an inch, and press. Now don't saturate your fabric necessarily, but you do have enough that it will keep it in place. Your goal as you do this is to have a nice, smooth curve. I use both hands and finger press that down where I want it. Take a look, see if it looks curved and smooth, and then set that with the iron. Now let's look at it from the other side. Nice curved edge. The spray sizing gives it substance and it gives it a crisp edge. Here we have our backing circle, and it's got the wrong side up, and we have our ring, and all the edges have been turned under. Now I'm going to turn the right side to the wrong side. When we pin the ring to the circle, notice that all of your green and yellow, the S1, S2 seams, are on the bias folds. But those angled pieces, you'll pin at the vertical and the horizontal folds. So the ring to the circle using a slightly scant and consistent quarter of an inch seam allowance. Be especially careful not to go over the quarter of an inch. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to grade the seam. Grading a seam is used in clothing construction when you have an enclosed seam to reduce the bulk and makes them smoother. It's much easier to hold this piece up because then I'm able to look down and make sure I'm not catching any of that backing fabric as I trim this. Is it absolutely necessary? Absolutely not. Let me now show you how to understitch. You understitch not where you have the seam allowances, 
but you stitch from the other side. So it's the right side of your ring, the wrong side of your back. Sew from the back side, nice and slowly, stitching about a thread's width away from the seam. It doesn't take that long, and the difference it makes is tremendous. Uh, something that helps is to finger press before you do it. And the other thing is you take your hands and put, exert a little bit of pressure to open that up so there's no tucks. Here are two quilts that I made for my two daughters. All that lace and the satin. There's just no way I could have made these without grading seams and understitching. You'll now bring the ring to the front side and top stitch. The stitching can be a simple straight stitch or a decorative stitch with contrasting thread. This is a great place to add trims or lace, as you can see with a black rec rack on this sample. So here's a close-up shot of the project we're working on today. Obviously, the blue and pink are the ring, but the soft yellow here, we call that our interior square. Now you're not seeing a square, but it's made with a square. Here's the interior square. It's a half of an inch larger than the square you marked on the backing circle. That's because we'll be wrapping it around this square of batting. For the batting, I'm using Quilter's Dream 8020. I like this fusible brand because it's compact and holds its shape so well. Cut your batting square 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. I've fused my batting to my backing square and now I'm ready to turn the edge over. I'll put a dab of glue on the corner and I'll fold this up being careful not to change the shape of my batting and fold up the corners first. Okay, once I've got those corners, now I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on the edge of the fabric and turn it over. Here's the backing circle. It's the one with the ring sewn on and notice it's wrong side up. Now we'll add the interior square right side up. That means wrong sides are facing. You'll center that interior square exactly with the square you marked on it in the very beginning. Now that these two are layered and pinned, you're ready to quilt. Yep, this early in the game and you're already quilting. To free motion quilt, I've put on my darning foot and dropped my feed docks. Now, look at this. This is a manageable size for free motion quilting. It's a block by block double wedding ring. Now today, I'm just going to echo around the flower. For this block, I used a buttonhole applique stitch that also acted as quilting. I went through all three layers. You can machine embroidery or whatever you want through the layers at this point or do them separately. If you have an embroidery machine, it can double as a quilting machine. That's what I used to do this block. I, I only regret that I didn't use matching thread in the bobbin. If I had have done that, this would have been reversible. And then we've got this little guy. He's a very angelic zebra, and he was embroidered on a white piece of fabric. It, I didn't embroider it all the way through. So on the back, you see a shape, and you see the quilting that I did, which is not as obvious on the front. If you're a hand quilter, this is a great project for you. Just safety pin based, fold it up, and take it along with you wherever you go. A stitch here, a stitch there, you'll be done in no time. Okay, now your blocks are all quilted. What comes next? Scallops. It wouldn't be a wedding ring without the scalloped edge. This is the part that has intimidated students. So what I'm asking you to do is just think of them as narrow blocks. I'm gonna call them scallops. You're gonna think narrow blocks. There are three pages dedicated to making piece scallops. Notice you see graphics of hands. If it's this way, it's the back view. And if your hand is up like this, it's the front view because you're going to be working on something back and front, back and front. Here we have a piece of scallop fabric and we fold it in half. Our Arkeys tool has two lines. 
you place this line along this fold exactly and then you'll cut around the top that table will tell you how many of the pink and blue arcs you need to set aside for the scallops for each one of these blue and the pink i'm going to take them apart right in half and so i will remove these few stitches so now i have those taken apart i'll do the same thing for the pink side now we're going to move this side we're going to reverse these like this and like this i'll sew these together right here and right here to cut this batting strip you're going to place it on these two small lines here and cut around here so here's our little piece of batting now because it's got such sharp ends i suggest you take a little bite off of that like this okay here are the pieces that we need to make a scallop we have our folded backing our batting and both of the rings you only need one per scallop while this is the correct fabric for the scallop i've decided to substitute purple for the video so you'll be able to see it better i'm folding it in half and matching that intersection here to the intersection of the centerfold and marked line here and I pin it. Flip this over. Take your time matching the fold of the scallop to the marked line and pin frequently. Notice here the purple scallop extends beyond the block edge by about a quarter of an inch. So I pin through here and make sure I get the marked line and I may peel back my interior square just a bit to help me see that green line and to help you see that green line a little better. That's not necessary for you to do at home. It just helps me to see. So let's stick it through the green line and you can see it's right on the fold. So that one is good. And I will put in five pins at least to get this just right. And so now I'm gonna come here through the line and it's on the fold. And then we'll come to the end here and pin that. So now that I've got it pinned, I'll go to the sewing machine. I'll start here, back stitch, stitch right along the line, and back stitch. So we, here we have our scallop sewn on. Our next step is to add the piece of batting that we cut. And so I'll place it right along that line, and I'll bond this fusible batting on and then bring these two edges together. Let's turn this over, pin this out of the way. Now back to the other side. We have an arc that we modified earlier. Notice that the edge has been turned under, just like we did for the rings. To mark the center of the circle where I can see the fold, but you might not be able to, I'm adding a pin. And we're going to center the arc onto the scallop, aligning it to that pin. Pin on the rest of the arc, being careful not to stretch it. It should come right to the edge of the purple scallop tips on both sides. Here you can see I've sewn right along the edge with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Can you see where the pink joins the green? We're going to fold right at that corner. We're going to bring that right to where it's going to match and fold it so that it's even with that seam right there. Once I've got it where I like it, take my thumbnail, try not to stretch it because it is bias, and now I've got that folded. Now I'm going to move over to the other side. Can you see where the yellow meets the pink? So I'm going to bring that point to the yellow and fold it back, and I'm going to finger press that fold. Now I'm going to turn it to the other side. You can see my stitching. You can also see the little ears on the corner. See how the stitching comes right to the end, matches everything up, unlike this side? By seam, it's scant right over here, and it doesn't meet up with the green. So I'm going to need to go in here and just take a little deeper seam. Now let's deal with this little ear, this little point that's sticking out. I have my needle with the thread knotted at the end, and I also have two hand needles threaded with black thread. The black makes it easier for you to see. If I wasn't doing this as a demo, I'd be using 
yellow thread on this side and green on the other. And I'll go into the purple fold to hide the knot. I'm going to use that thread and pull it so that the purple piece comes over. And I'll catch the needle into the scallop just through the top layer and not the batting. Now take the needle and grab the yellow. Watch as I pull that yellow tip over with the thread. And now one more stitch to hold it in place. Make it even and then leave your needle hanging. Now let's move to the other side. And now you can see why I have a second needle and thread. First hack down the purple and then the green, just like before. The little sewn ears line up with the edge of the interior square. And I'm going to flip this over. Now we've got our folds. The way we finger pressed it, we're going to hold it right at that fold. And now we're going to turn it to the other side. So when I flip this over, I want to keep that fold. The less I handle this piece, the better. And I'm going to bring that fold right to where the other green meets. I'll do a little running stitch on the back side of the green in order to get my needle to come out right at the tip. Now I'll bring the folded edge down to where the two greens meet and secure it with a couple of tiny stitches. I'll use that needle as a tool to tuck in the excess green fabric. I'll be running my needle in the little tunnel created by the fold on the scallop side and on the circle side back and forth for that little inch and a quarter distance and it's just a hidden stitch. Now you've got your point. Let's repeat the same process on the other side. And I'm going to catch it so that it, it basically keeps it from stretching. It's not a knot where you could cut it, but it's a knot that'll keep it from stretching. Okay, so now I've secured that point, the one that your eye will see. Now this is a bias edge here, and I want to make sure that I'm not stretching it. Now I'm ready to do that back and forth stitch. So I'm going to do it from the side this time. Go in the block side like that, and now that tunnel on the scallop side, on the block side, and I'm just going through that first layer if I can, just back and forth. As I get closer to the end, I'm going to use that needle and start pushing that yellow edge under there. Now edge stitch the remaining pink scallop edge. And there you have it. I have two scallops sewn to each circle. That's all the scallops I need. All that I have left is to sew these four blocks together. So let's start with the top two. One pink and one blue. You can see that the scallops are on the outside edges and we're ready to join them together. So I'll take these two so that the back sides are together. Match those seams like this so that the green and yellow seam, put those together exactly and pin that in place. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Yellow and green, and they come together right there. And now I'm going to put together the centers. So I find the center here with the line and poke my pin through. And where I want to check it this time is where, if I open this up, I can see where the two yellows pieces, I want those to intersect just perfect. So we've got our pin. We'll pin it there. And let's do the same thing the other side with the green pieces, making sure those are aligned. Now we have quite a few pins in here, but at least we know we have our two marked lines together. We'll start here, back stitch, stitch directly on the line, come to the bottom, back stitch, and we've got our first seam. When I put those together, these were my seam allowance that opened up to create your wedding ring. I also sewed the other pair together. And so we have one last seam, and that's to put the two pairs together. I'll go to the seam where we sewed our arc down and make sure that these two greens come together. And now it does. Pin there. Go to the center, put my pin through the marked line, and make sure it comes through the line on the other side. Match the two yellows. It takes longer to pin it than it does to sew it. Now I'm ready to sew along the line 
starting here, back stitch, go all the way through, and back stitch. Now everything's sewn together. All I have left to do now is to sew these arcs down. When I do this, I start at the top and go to the blue and back to the center and around and around and around and around. So I can do it all in one step. I finished my top stitching, added some buttons in the center of the flowers. It's put together and there's no binding to worry about. And so now you're done. You've finished your double wedding ring project. That's what I like about it. It's a project you can finish. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on Rings That Bind. Find the book, the tool, and many more videos at philipsfiberart.com. And we'd love to hear from you. Please subscribe, hit like if you liked it. Thank you, and God bless.